Hey guys, welcome. Um, I'm Christian, and I'm here with Ryan Reese from the Whosoever's. Uh, we're super stoked to be to be here today, and we're just going to be talking about the the who, who, one of the Whosoever's documentary, and then just other things in the world, what, what God's doing, and and how um, you know what the Lord's doing through through uh, even through this time of of uh, isolation and coronavirus, you know. And so we're super stoked to be here today, and and glad to have Ryan here, and um ryan could you open us up in prayer before we go at it man absolutely lord jesus we just uh thank you for uh what you've been doing through the calvary chapel movement over the last uh um, since the 70s since like 1976 when you started pouring out your spirit and you are continuing to move by your holy spirit today uh, in the movement god and you are moving with this uh new uh younger generation and um, we're seeing many get saved, and uh, we are excited to see what you are going to do uh, in the future in these very interesting times of, of what we've learned about through uh, just of the Bible studies that we've listened to over and over of end time stuff, God. And now we're actually seeing it right unfold right in front of our eyes. So these are very exciting times to be living in, Lord. So we just ask that you continue uh, to use our lives uh, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. And right, welcome, guys. If you guys are just joining us, if you have any questions or, or um, prayer requests, please leave them at, um, in the comment section, and we'll, we'll, we'll answer it at the end. And we would love to, to pray with you guys and answer any questions that you may have for Ryan. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll just we'll get into it, man. And first off, uh, Ryan, I want to ask, uh, what – in your in your documentary it's so good you guys need to watch it we'll make sure we'll put the link in in the comment section so you can watch the documentary the whosoever it's powerful it's 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 just so applicable to what's going on in today's world and um but ryan you share about romans 116 and it, um how how is romans 116 um applied to even right now in today's world and even through your documentary uh, for i'm not ashamed of the gospel for it has the power to save those who believe um, well, the gospel, it's, it's the good news, right? That's what Jesus always refers. The gospel is the good news. So when you're living in a generation, um, and, and obviously every generation changes, you know, but when you're living in this generation right now with depression, anxiety, suicide, spousal abuse, um, kids are getting molested more than ever. Like right now at this time, if you read what's going on, what the doctors are saying, what's happening in cold Everything is at an all-time high right now. And the good news is the gospel. The good news is people are doing this stuff because they don't have peace. Like, they're selling more marijuana than ever. People are drinking more. You know, uh, all these things that increase sin, if you will, is increasing. And the good news of the gospel is people realizing that they're broken. That, mm -hmm. that, you know, at the end of the day, like you and I know, like if you go on social media and you're looking at what's going on, what people are, are pushing out through their social platforms, it's people are broken inside. Mm -hmm. so in return, their spirit is broken because they don't have a relationship with the king. They, have, they haven't heard the good news. So in return, your, your conscience is broken. Your, your actions are broken. And that's what we're, we're seeing. Um, I do want to say one thing because I know we're going to get into a bunch of stuff. But I met with um, the uh, – He's the, he's the director of outreach for the DEA, and he oversees like five states, like California, Hawaii, and then a couple of Guam, and then a couple other over here. And I think uh, when there was this whole opiate crisis that happened, uh, you know, on Time Magazine, when Trump was talking about it a while ago, when he first got elected, Trump assigned 25 DEA agents for outreach to combat the opiate problem in the United States. Well, this guy heard about what we were doing in the public school system, and he ended up coming to, to meet with us, to talk to us. And he sat down with me and he said, Ryan, what do you see that's going on with, you know, the culture? Because he knows, I, obviously, I'm working with, you know, a lot of young people uh, in culture and even, like, musicians and artists and different people. Because what, what do you see? And I said, well, before you tell – before I tell you what, you what I see in culture, what – is what is uh, what are you guys saying in the DEA office in government of what you guys see in culture? He said, "Well, truthfully, he goes, we're back in the we're back in the 60s and 70s." And I'm like, "Wait, I don't get it." And he says, "Well, 
So we're at war. So drugs are pretty much legal. Free sex, racism, and there was a couple other things that he he was talking about. I can't remember off the top of my head. And then I started. Thinking, I'm like that is that is so true. Like you know this whole like uh, Black Lives Matter, Blue Lives Matter, White Lives Matter, all this. We're, there's racism happening. You know they're calling our president a racist. Um, war, not only on our soil, but there's war abroad, rumors of war. Then you got legalizing of marijuana. Right now, we're trying to legalize mushrooms, hallucinogenics. You know, a, a, you know, opiates are pretty much legal at this point. Then free sex, what you're seeing in culture, which, you know, all these people that are posting half-naked photos, and sex is, like, pretty much normal at this point this point like free sex yeah. and all yeah. these things and then i started thinking i'm like dude that is so true like back in the I, and i like to talk about this because the calvary chapel movement has um roots to the 70s so it's really relevant to calvary chapel movement um what was happening back then they woodstock well we have we have electric daisy carnival we have coachella we have we have the biggest and baddest, gnarliest music festivals that are going on around the clock. It's not just once a year. They're all yeah. the time. So what we're looking at when we look at culture, what was happening then and now? It's exactly the same thing. It just looks a little bit different. And what happened back in the 60s and 70s, there was a major revival because people were at the end of, their, of themselves. They were completely broken. So going back to your question, Romans... The power of the gospel has the power to save those who believe. Right now, I Amen. believe we are in a great time for a great harvest. Uh, and, and, and you're just right, man. And like what you said about anxiety is so true, you know, like with some people, people are going on my, my age, they're going to social media to fill this void. And, and, yeah. and, it, and even that's not enough. Only Jesus is enough, you know, so that's great. And you're so right. You know, I, I totally agree. Um, and so the next question is, can you just share um, a little bit about your documentary and, and what that was like, you know, filming that and, and being in the moment and, and maybe some of our viewers here that have maybe heard about it and, yeah. and kind of just give a, a spin about what that is. So the whole reason why we, we um, the documentary is based on our tours. It's a great, it's a video on, a, on the Great Commission. Um, I, I call it a radical revival Great Commission video. Um, we started this thing. We started uh, the Whosoever's Movement, which I run now, the whosoever's.com, which I run now, um, to go into the public school system because exactly what we're talking about. All those issues we've been talking about, this is happening in middle school and high school. Um, it's starting very young now. It's not even, I mean, an average kid gets into pornography at like six to, to seven years old now. The numbers keep going down. They're getting exposed wow. by friends or family. So with all that said, this is why we go to the public school system to bring the gospel message. So we've been touring public schools for the last, uh, we've been touring public schools. We've been doing the ministry for about 12 years now, but we've been touring the public schools for about four years. We've seen about close to 80,000 students give their life to the public school system around the world, from Australia Incredible. to LA to New York, to Mexico, to Canada, you name it. And um we just started seeing all these things happen with, with, with what God was doing. So I was like, you know what? I always come back to conferences at Calvary Chapel conferences or church services. And I'm, I'm explaining to people what we're seeing and I'm working with Calvary chapels around the world to go into the schools. And then they disciple the kids later. But I, we started seeing God just pouring out his spirit and people just getting saved. And we're, we just started stepping out by faith and laying hands on the sick and people are getting recovered, like, mm. you know, girl, like they were, we were in a rehab and the director of the rehab had broken ribs and, and, a, and a neck brace on. And, you know, we, we gave the gospel, the good news. We led them to the Lord. We, they, we prayed that they would get filled with the Holy Spirit. And then we just started laying hands on the sick and literally her neck got healed. She ended up taking her brace off. Everything we do, we we're started filming. And uh, we just wow. started praying for people's legs, government officials' knees, principals, backs and all these people just started getting healed and what would happen is when people would get healed it points to the fact that jesus is the messiah that the Amen. word of god and that the word of god the bible that we're reading is actually real 
So it brings all it brings attention to Christ, always Christ centered. And Amen. those and what happened is we started seeing an influx of this stuff. So I, I took a filmer on the trip, Benny, uh, which is not part of the movement. He was just a hired, uh, you know, employee. Uh, Video guy, videographer. Yeah. So we hired him to come on the trip. But it's funny. He actually, his dad is actually a pastor in Calvary Chapel in St. Bakersfield. So we invited him to the trip. And what happened is this video was only supposed to be a two-minute video. It was supposed to be a recap of a trip. Well, we ended up doing six events. In 12 days, it was basically four high schools a day, and God just poured out his spirit on this trip, and he literally looked at me after the first day, and he goes, we need to make a documentary. And I'm like, what do you, like, what do you, like, I'm aware you're just going to do, like, a recap. And he's all, there's so much footage here, and God is doing just amazing things, like, the world can see this. So I was like, okay, I'm down. And then I'm like, well, what would be awesome is, why don't you just tell your story if you've been on the trip? Because then it's not biased, like us trying to push what we're doing. You yeah, could, you right. You just document from your perspective of being an outsider of what you saw on this trip. So that's basically what happened. This video went from a two-minute video to a 50-minute film. And we had to narrow it down so much as you saw the video. Yeah. And that's basically what this film is. It's awesome because we also have it in Spanish subtitles. Oh, wow. It, it trans yeah, It's on the whosoevers.com. You have the English version. And then you have the English version with Spanish subtitles. So it could cross, you know, you know, it, it could go global, basically. Wow. And uh, it, it really is a powerful documentary. And one of the things that I love is that, like, when you're the Lord's using you to, to heal people and you automatically say, like, this is Jesus, you know, like, this is this is like the Lord, like, it's, it's Jesus it's because of, of Jesus, you know, and like, the, I love the part with the guy and like, he with his crutches, you know, and he's trying to sell you like marijuana and then he gets <laughs> he gets saved and he leaves different than when he came like obviously like you know like that's like wow like that's crazy you can't make that stuff up like you can't make that up and you know what i love about that story the, the reason why that story is so special is because we just got kicked out at that point we just got kicked out of the schools for talking about jesus okay so the government's like you guys can't talk about jesus if you don't talk about jesus you guys could continue to do like the rest of the 30 schools right so we leave and we're like, we're not compromising, right? That's what we've always been taught. Don't compromise where God guides, God provides, right? Chuck Smith. Chuck Smith. <laughs> Chuck has told us that. So we're like, forget it. We're done. And we on the trip, we are all on the trip. We all skateboard, right? So there was this amazing skate park there in that city. So I go, let's go out and skate. So as we're driving there, we're and I don't even know if this, was, this part was in the story. But I'll just tell you, we're driving down the street to go to the skate park. And I look over and these white, perfect ledges going down these stairs. And I'm like, let's pull over and skate those ledges. And they happen to be at a church. So we pulled over. And when we got there to go skate, we were, we were skating. There was a Catholic church. And then we got the trick and we were about to leave. And I left the crowd earlier to go to the car. And all of a sudden, that guy that pulls up, he goes, hey, man, you want to buy some, in Spanish, you want to buy some mota, which is like yeah. marijuana, right? And right when he says that, he's in crutches. And I'm like, so I don't speak Spanish really, but I know, you know, Mota, right? and tacos and carne asada and all that stuff, right? as you know. <laughs> so, I'm Hispanic too, and I, 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 I can't even speak Spanish, bro. Everyone always makes fun of me about that, but it's, you know. But you know carne asada and you know Mota. Oh, you know, yeah, of course. So I call my translator over and I go, hey, I'm going to get our translator. Tell him to come over. So basically what happens, he walks up and I go, hey, I go ask him if his foot – What's wrong with his foot if it's broken or sprained or what happened? And in the video, he goes, it's broken. And he has like, he says his pain, his, his, his foot is throbbing because he got, he actually got hit by a car. Someone tried running him over. So his, his, pain, his pain in his leg is like throbbing. So in the video, it shows that we pray for him and all of a sudden the throbbing stops immediately, right? And then we pray again and dude, he gets healed and he starts walking and I'm like holding his crutch. So what happens is, because the signs and wonders, Jesus says, preach the gospel, signs and wonders follow. That's what Jesus says in the Bible, so that means we can do that. And what happens is, then after he gets healed, what did I do? I, I go, you need to give your life to Jesus. Now he believes that Jesus is real. He gives his life to Jesus, and then we lay our hands on him, and he gets filled with the Holy Spirit. And we go, what happened when we prayed? He goes, I don't know. He goes, I feel like something, it was like pretty, like I felt like peace, like pretty. And we're like, that's the Holy Spirit. You just got filled with the Holy Spirit. So what we're doing, the whole video, back to the video question, 
is the whole video is that what I want to do is I want to show what you and I and all of us that are going to church every week in the Bible in Calvaries, they're teaching us the scripture, they're showing us where it's at in scripture, but then this video is to show what it looks like in 2020. So it's almost mm-hmm. like you're reading it, you're learning it in depth at Calvary Chapel, but then like here, here's visually what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And, and that's what I love. And, and um, you know, we talked about this uh, yesterday. Um, you know, like we, we go to church, we're getting fed the word of God, we're growing. But what happens like if we're not, we're, we're called to what? Be disciple. What, what happens if we're not going out, you know? Like, and that's what I love about the Whosoever's movement. Like you guys are going out, you guys are, are making disciples and you're, 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 you're actually going out. And why is that so important to go out and, and to evangelize, Ryan? Because Jesus said it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Facts. <laughs> he, he commanded it. He says, go out and preach the gospel, you know, to the nations. And, and he says it twice in the Great Commission, right? He says it in Matthew. Uh, uh, go out and preach the gospel. I can't even, I, you know what? I have babies and I've been up all night. So I'm trying to remember the verse right now. Uh, the you're, Matthew, good, you're good. Uh, re, say the Matthew verse off the top of your head. Do you remember the Great Commission? Uh, go out in the world and, and uh, preach, preach the gospel. The gospel baptize disciples, in the name of the yeah. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teach them to obey my commandments. So that, see, it, it takes a while for me to warm up. That is the Great Commission. Go preach the gospel to the world. Uh, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey my commandments. That's the church. And then what happened? Re- then repeat. Go into the world. There's no church without evangelists. There's no one coming to church unless you're reaching people. And then look at Jesus's life. His The majority of his ministry, he was going from town to town, city to city, house ministries. He would show up in the temple. He'd be, pre- he'd be preaching the gospel outside the temple. And then he would go into the temple and teach the word. But for, for some reason, I don't know why it's just so easy for us as Christians to get stuck in the institution and say, this is what, this is what God commands. That's not what God commands. That's a piece of it. The great commission is, he actually starts the great commission with going in both of them. Go, go, go. Being in the church is not going. That is the end of the great commission. That is teaching our disciples to obey the commandments, but we're forgetting the go, the go, the go. So we have to know that we have in our church, you know, in Acts 6, it talks about that the, the apostles, they wanted to uh, separate themselves to prayer and fasting so they could teach the word of God. But what they did is they got these guys, there was a group of them, that were filled of faith and power of the Holy Spirit, it says. Stephen being one of them and um, uh, Philip being another one. Those are the two evangelists we know from reading the Bible in Acts. But then there's other ones. It says that they laid their hands on them. And those ones went out, and they and we read about Pete, we read about Philip and uh, Philip and Pete, Stephen. They were the evangelists, and revival was breaking out. It even says that Philip did he was full of faith and power, and he did many signs and wonders amongst the people. Mm-hmm. Clearly, Mark sixteen says preach the gospel, signs and wonders follow. So what was going on was he was clearly preaching the gospel, and then signs and wonders were following, or. He was praying for people to get healed, and then he would lead them to the Lord. That's just the way it goes, and that's what you're seeing in the video. The purpose of the video is when we, I, the way I the way I look at the Bible. Ever since I got saved, is I just read it and was like, because my parents just said, Ryan, every word of the Bible is real from Genesis to Revelations. You don't change it; you take it for face value. So I go, okay. Jesus went and cast out demons. Okay, we can do that. These guys prayed for the sick. The eyes open, the ears open, the, the the mouth open. You could do that. So I just have that childlike faith. I read the Bible and I do it. And it happens. Not, and just to be clear, not every time, but God, when I don't put God in the box. He does it more mm. than he doesn't do it. Let's just say that. And I would say yeah. that my personal experience, every time I'm in the situation of preaching the gospel, God starts moving and people start getting healed in different things. That's what I've seen. And that's so funny because Jesus says, preach the gospel signs and wonders follow, right? I don't go around trying to heal everyone. It's not like that. My focus is preach the gospel, lead people to the Lord. And then if God wants to move after, awesome. If not, cool too, you know, not my problem. Yeah. Um, and you, uh, 
So how many? I know I, I've heard your story before. We met about a year ago at CBI, at Calvary Bible Institute, and you you should you have a really cool story about your kids and, and God's grace and faithfulness and in, in your marriage and yeah. and and can you share a little bit of that like to our to our audience of, of your kids and and how that's going and yeah, yeah. I think you have cool stories. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Um, so little background with me is um I've been working in the music and skateboard industry for the last shoot how 20 years now at least at least 20 years over 20 years now and um i got saved uh, radically from working in the music i was uh, working in the mainstream uh, managing a professional skateboard team and i od'd from 90s of cocaine and xanax and for the third time and came out of it gave my life to jesus and god got a hold of my life and i put a heart put, put a desire for me to give the great commission and during this process as i started going out and living the great commission um I ended up meeting my wife. I got invited to start to teach at Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa from Chuck Smith before he passed away. Um, that was the Monday night study st stopped and I started a Thursday night. And basically what happened from there is my first night I met my wife, well, my soon to be wife there. Long story short, uh, we got married and we went through infertility for about two years, couldn't get pregnant. And we just decided that that pregnant wasn't going to be our God. We, you know, cause I saw anxiety and depression kind of coming over my wife cause she couldn't have a kid. And I just said, look, it's not going to be our God. Uh, if we get pregnant, we get pregnant. If not, no more. After this month, if we don't get pregnant. We're done trying. Right. Well, we got pregnant. We went to the doctors. They discovered it was a high risk pregnancy and, uh, we got, we got pregnant with fraternal twins. Um, and then our second appointment, one of the eggs split into identical twins. We showed up and they having triplets but this is a high-risk pregnancy wow. and uh yeah it got it got really scary because they said this is very dangerous for your wife's life and for the kids a lot of complications fast forwarding we get to 16 weeks and the doctor looks at us and says these babies are millimeters from coming out and you're gonna lose them they're gonna die and there's nothing we can do and uh god woke up my mom in the middle of the night at three o'clock in the morning and gave her a vision you know what we read about in joel or acts says you know in the last days god will pour out a spirit and People will see visions and prophesy and all that stuff. And she saw a vision and it was a stormy sea with a boat. And there was a baby with brown hair looking out the front and two identical twins sleeping in the front of the boat. And in the, in the vision, the boat manifested or transformed into Jesus's hand. So we knew that these babies were in a storm, but they were in God's hands. Remember, all signs and wonders always point back to the fact that Jesus is the Messiah and that the word of God is real. So we knew the babies were in a storm, but God, they were in Jesus's hands. Fast forwarding. Those babies ended up staying in my wife millimeters from coming out all the way to eight months. And I ended up having healthy triplet daughters, one uh, brunette and two identical twin blondes like the vision. And, uh, I have triplets. They're crazy. They're absolutely, <laughs> I say crazy. They're party animals. Uh, they are That's very, so cool. a lot of energy. So it's awesome. Um, I have a lot of rainbow and unicorn parties. I just had a son that's seven. He's now he's seven months. And, wow. um, that's it. That's kind of where we're at, you know, just trying to work out our continue to work out our faith, my marriage relationship with the kids and all that. It's a continue. I don't have it figured out. We're just trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. And, and I mean, I don't have it figured out either. It's by God's grace, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, um, we you know we hear the kill the noise a lot with the whosoever is can you explain like what that means like that the wording like kill the noise and like what that what that means you know yeah well the the kill the noise basically um it it came to me in a bible study i did a while ago called destroy all gods and uh what it is is this noise it's 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 the noise is what you're listening to what you're watching um what you know let's just say garbage in garbage out right what, what did jesus say <laughs> what did jesus say you know it's not what comes out of your body that defiles you what goes in right to the heart jesus also, yeah, says right. the eye, jesus also says the eye is the light to the body you know and then at the end it says what light you actually think you have could be dark right like what you and I'm, I'm quoting from the new living translation because that's what i read because i have a poor reading level um but I, I study i study all through the king james version with chuck smith because that's what he teaches but i, I quote the new living um, but what happens is, you know, you narrow all that stuff down to the fact that when Jesus says, if you want to be my disciple, you got to turn from yourself and pick up your cross. So the noise is all that stuff that's coming in your body appetites. You have to go to the cross. 
and you have to crucify the body appetites. You have to destroy all gods, all the little idols in your life that are you that are putting in front of God. You have to destroy that stuff. Um, and in and I have one King James version. It says, "If after the flesh ye shall die, but if ye live after the Spirit and do mortify the deeds of the flesh, ye shall live." So mortify means a self inflict pain. We got to get all those, all that noise and stuff that will destroy us. We have to destroy what destroys us. We have to hang it on the cross and crucify it daily so we can live by that spirit-led life of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's true, you know, and like we, there's so many things that can distract us, you know, like or, or take us off track, little idols, you know. So Easy. Like, easily, you like. What? It's a continuous, you could speak to it from your personal life. It's a continuous thing in your life that we have to continue. Daily, every day. Yeah. Every, that's why Lucas says daily. It's not like it's like people think, oh, I fixed my life. No, every day I wake up and I go, I gotta change this. I gotta change that. Yeah. No, it, it it's really good, man, and that, that's so encouraging. Um, so like going back to the documentary, um, so that's like an action-packed tour, and you guys are on the move, but um, I I love that the whole thing, like you guys are showing that you're walking by faith. You I mean you have things getting canceled? You have. Like, yeah. you know, like, and you're just walking by faith and like allowing the Lord to move and guide and, you know, he provides, you know, so yeah. we got, when we, when we landed, so we, when we, when we showed up, we had like over 30 events planned. When we landed on Mexican soil, uh, the whole trip was canceled. And then, Dang. Dang. And, then and then we got one school, remember? And then they started picking up and then we got canceled because we kept talking about Jesus. So we got canceled twice. By the government. Wow. So what? <laughs> what? <laughs> that's crazy. At what point did you realize that the whole tour was canceled? Because they kind of like show like they, that they were, you don't know. <laughs> so like playing games. Yeah. They were playing games. So so all my all my guys are all see when I travel it's all young guys you know so like I'm the I'm the oldest guy on the trip but all the yeah, other guys old, bro. <laughs> all, all the other guys they're all younger like 19 18 uh, oh, cool. 20s but. Because we're all we've all traveled together all the time, they know my personality. So they decided to play a prank on me. The whole trip got canceled at the beginning, and they didn't tell me. Remember that? Yeah. So yeah. Like, hey, because they, cause they see they've already been on trips. And they they already know this wasn't the first time that stuff gets canceled. God always shows up. So they already have that faith. Like, hey, it got canceled, but God's gonna do. It's this trip's gonna happen because God's gonna do something. So they were like, let's just play a prank on Ryan and not tell him. And then I found out like halfway through the trip. Okay, that halfway. Got canceled. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. And uh, so like you're saying the authorities like they're trying to like have you guys compromise and like not talk about God and and Jesus, you know, and prayer and what 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 what's going through your mind like as like they're telling you like compromise like. Um. Well. What is that like? So there's two things that happen. So first, so first I'm like. Okay, because I've been in situations where I'm in L.A. and the, the principal is like a Jew and he's like, you know, you could say you could say higher power or you can't say Jesus. You know, do, when you're an atheist Jew, you're you, you're, you're not going to they're not going to allow you to say Jesus. Right. So and he's like, well, you know, you got to you, you got to compromise your message. And I said, um, you know, I'm not going to say higher power. You know, I'm going to say I could say God. I can say higher power through the message. But again, I'm going to say Jesus. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you, you kind of think about how you can navigate to the end of saying Jesus. But when I was in this situation, um, I'm, I'm in Mexico and I'm, I'm trying to be, you know, in Second Peter it talks about, you know, uh, honor all brothers and respect the king. You remember that in Second King? Yeah, in Second uh, yeah. Peter. So in one side of me, the scriptures are saying honor the government, but then you're like, you know, but you can't compromise the message. So I was just kind of going, okay, look it. I'll say God all the way through my message, God, because it's kind of like all encompassing. But then when I get to the end, I'm like, I'm going to say Jesus, right? At the end. So we, we, I was like, okay, I started doing that to, through the one school, but then they said, no, you can't talk. You can't. Oh, and then they said, you can't say Jesus or pray. So I said, okay, fine. So that's basically the point when we said, you know what? We don't have a story then. Because everything that happened in my story, how I got saved, was God and Jesus. So if you can't let me pray for people, then we're done. So we just said, all right, Jess or our tour guide went and told them, we're done. We're not going to do it anymore. So wow. that was that. Wow. Um, 
And I like one one thing you said in the documentary. You're like, doors are closing, but God's gonna open new doors. Like, yep. like God has to open, and he and he does. And, and like, how how true is that? You know, like I, I'm sure you have so many crazy stories and testimonies of like where God is closing a door, but then something else pops up. Totally. No, that that's what that's basically what happens when you're on. See, when you're when we plan the trip, there's 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 a set stuff that we have, but when we when we land, there's always new trips. Like when we got there, like the prisons opened up. We went into the main prisons where the cartel kids were, all the under 18. Then we went to the actual main prison where all the adults were. So door, then we went to like a rehab. Then we did a skate contest. So doors just open as as uh, things happen. We ended up actually casting a demon out of a, um, a cartel uh, a, a cartel hitman at the skate park. Someone wow. brought him from the church. It was his his cousin brought him to the skate park. He was he was like 19 years old or something. To come watch the skate contest because they're just kids and they're young guys anyway. It's not like they're, they, it's not like it's an old cartel guy. It's like a young kid. And uh, I went to pray for him, and when I laid my hands on him, he fell on the ground and he started foaming at the mouth. Wow! And I, I just said, "Hey, get him over here." I knew that there was a demon in him, so I told him to take him on the side of the skate park. And long story short, that's gnarly. When I when I started asking him to confess his sins, he started growling and 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 he took off running. And I cha- went out running and chasing him, and I just told him in Jesus' name, stop. And then he tried tackling me, and uh, I, I maneuvered, and then I just kept praying. I got other people. We prayed for him, and he ended up uh, falling on the ground, foaming at the mouth, and then he ended up, the demon ended up coming out. So you never know what's going to happen, you know, when you're living the Great Commission. But the Bible's there. The stories are there. He, Jesus clearly shows you what's going to happen. You just don't know when it's going to happen to you. Yeah. No, you're right. And – um. Another thing, how cool is that just, like, day two, you know, a lot of things get canceled. You guys just go skate, you know? You're just like, let's go skate, like, kick it and skate. And and, and uh, it's cool how, seeing the Lord using skating, you know, like, to, to reach people. Like, tell me about that, you know? Like, what's so cool about that? Like, Well, the cool thing with God is that he um, he's not going to put you in stuff that you don't want to do. And I think that's, I think, the biggest fear for Christians say youngsters you know when they're trying to commit their life to god or even when i was going to kill my life to that god i'm like because you have this like persona of like okay i give my life to god my my life's gonna suck it's gonna be boring and you know how what am i gonna do now like i can't have any fun i can't have any fun i'm doing so many cool things now well there's only one of you there's only ever going to be one of you and god created you with a specific plan and purpose all those desires, all those gifts, all those talents that you have, that you're doing now, God will use those. You, and you guys have probably heard this over and over. God will use that for your glory, right? So everything that I've done in the past, I'm still doing now. I'm a skater. I surf. I do concerts. I'm doing like concert events at schools. We're throwing parties for kids still. I've been doing that since I was in high school. I still skate. I've been skating since I was in second grade. I'm still working. I do design products. I, I've been touring with skateboarders. I'm now still touring with skateboarders. You know, I'm still, I've had a gift of bringing people together. I'm still bringing people together. I, you know, everything that I've always loved to do, I'm still doing and much more. So now I'm touring and I tour with my friends that are all skaters and I have non-skaters with me. Guys that love videoing. I love guys. I have other guys that like doing marketing. I have pastors. I take I take senior pastors on trips with me. Like I, yeah, I, I, I I'm, I'm doing what who I what I'm what I'm who I am in Christ, and all the gifts and talents that Christ put in me. I'm using those for Christ. So that's how it works. Praise God. And I, I I've heard you say this a couple of times, and I, and it's so true. Not all storms have come to disrupt our lives, but have come to clear our path. Yes. And, and can you break that down and, and just kind of explain, like, how that's been true in your life and the Lord's used that? Well, the, the interesting thing is that when you're going through, when you're going through, like, these uh, storms or trials in your life, you think, oh, man, what am I, why is this happening to me? Why am I going through this? Because we don't see... Because God's God's omniscient, right? So He's the He's at the He's at the beginning of time. He's right now, present. He's at in the future, right? Bless you. Uh, Thank you. So He's 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 working out His eternal plan and purpose in your life right now. 
for what's going to happen in the future. So when I went through that storm with my with my wife with the kids, <laughs> of losing the kids, we we were so scared and so sketched out going, why are we going through such a hard time in life? This is almost a year of trials, right? But yeah. when we came out of it, that is now the story that I'm touring around the world, that I'm telling my testimony, not only how I got saved, but how, what God did through this time of me having my kids. And that's the story that has brought almost 80,000 people to the Lord. I went through a very dark time in my life with the pregnancy, but God is using that for his glory now. And that is the fruit of that that storm and so yeah. you got to be encouraged that god is he's fine-tuning us he's developing us he's shaping us like it says in uh jeremiah when it talks about the vessel how he's forming us he's breaking us down he's molding us into the vessel for him to use for the master to use for his glory no, that's so good and so true and and ryan uh real quick you know like right now we're in a time of a season like corona covid19 and a lot of people are are, are isolated alone and and there's been some anxiety and, and, and even believers, you know, and, and, and a lot of us. And what, what would you say or how would you encourage someone that, that's going through that right now? Just being alone, maybe, or, or anxious of the uncertainty, you know, yeah. all these things that are going on in our daily world right now. It's just it's crazy. It's pretty interesting because it's I think it's affected everybody. You know, even myself, like me being home not touring or not being able to go to church or these, these other, these other things like see my, my, our, I guess it's more like our routines, right? Our routines got broken. Yeah. So now that kind of threw us in a weird loop. So like normally I'm like, when I'm traveling, I'm on the plane, I'm listening to studies and activating my faith. I'm, you know, living, I'm going about my business, living my routine of what I normally do. Also, everything gets shut down and now I have to kind of rework my whole life and now you get out of your routine of you know it could be as simple as like going to see your friend going to see your family you know going to church your fellowship all these things when all that stuff stops all of a sudden now your life's in a weird funky place wouldn't you say kind of like it gets real funky and that funkiness is what brings on the anxiety to bring on depression and that, that's what it is it's your, your routine gets shifted right so those things that you would normally take for granted, now they're not around and your life gets weird in a sense. And um, yeah, I, I personally, you know, I've been just in, especially right now, I'm kind of getting like, all right, man, like, let's, let's get the show on the road here. You know what I mean? Like, let's get, that's that. what I feel. Let's, I, I'm kind of getting anxiety in the sense of like, <laughs> okay, like it's been a while, like, let's go now. Like, I'm tired of being at home. And that's what people are going through. They're tired of being at home. They want to get back to normal life. They want to get into fellowship. They want to get with their friends. They want to go do what they normally um, do for normalcy, right? So I would encourage them back to what you were saying. All things work together for good for those that love Christ according to his purpose. Not all storms have come to disrupt our lives. Some have come to carry our path. Right now could be a season of what I personally have seen too with people that are taking this, see, see there, there's people that sees this opportunity um, for great things. Like for instance, right now could be a time to get closer to the Lord. Right now, there's a lot of people that are working. What are you doing with your time? Are you just on your phone wasting your life away, or are, see Netflix? Are you on the Are you on the scriptures and you're like? That time when you used to say, man, I wish I had time to read the Bible. And now you have it. What have yes. you done? Man, I wish I had the time to to uh, go through a bunch of Chuck Smith CDs or my local pastor. Did you do it or not? Man, I wish I had time to actually start picking up learning guitar or maybe DJing or, you know, maybe starting a company or maybe producing music. Did you seize this opportunity to do that, there's going to be, what's going to happen is during this time of months and months, you there's going to be a group of people that have produced new music, that have grown the word, that have seized this opportunity. And then there's other people that are going to say, I finished Netflix. <laughs> the, that, 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 yeah. And that's sad if you finish Netflix. Unless you finish a whole new Bible series, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You know, have you seen that on Netflix? Uh, no, but uh, uh, the, the, it's, the chosen. It's, based, 
it's basically where they read the Bible. It's called Gospel of John, Gospel of Matthew, Gospel of Luke, Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's them just reading the Bible, and it shows like a visual of what what it, what, what could have taken place during that time. But my point is, did you waste your time, or did you use it, and did you produce, you know? So, yeah. yeah. No, that's that's right. that's the sad part. And or or you know, you reap what you sow. You remember that verse, you reap what you sow? Yeah, you sow Either, to the spirit, you reap everlasting life, so to the flesh you're going to reap corruption. So what did you do during this time in if you were so, if you're sowing to the spirit in this time like growing in those things, then you don't have anxiety because you're producing the things of the spirit. If you're not and you're sowing the things of the flesh, you're probably depressed and have anxiety and you're getting anxious, you know? I'm not saying a Christian can't get a little like unsettled. I feel a little unsettled, like, okay, dude, I'm over it. But yet during this time, we've we're getting this radio, we're we're actually producing more radio shows. We're uh I'm teaching, I, I started teaching the Bible, doing some Bible stuff. I'm I, my wife just launched up a new vitamin company called American that. Naturals. That is to help people with pure vitamins. No. No, it's it's pure. There's no like um, stuff that goes inside of it. No, like it's all clean. There's no um, I can't think of the word. Garbage. No garbage. You're not taking garbage. You're not putting sugar and sodium and all this whack stuff. Fills they're called. So we created a new company to actually help people because if you have an immune strong immune system, you don't have to worry about a vaccine. So we use this time to create a company to actually help people. Um. I got some turntables because I used to spin a lot of electronic music in the 90s in, in the rave scene. So I, I got turntables. I started spinning again because when we're on high school tours, we uh, we play electronic music. We, we throw parties for the kids. So now I got turntables. So I picked that up again. So, you know, it's like uh, you, I use this time to produce, you know. So when I come out of it, the parties are going to be gnarlier in the schools. We got vitamins. I'm going to start teaching the Bible more. And I just finished a new. I, I got a. I got a book deal with uh, Hachette Publishing and Worthy, and I just finished my book yesterday. So, wow. you know, this is the time when you reap the things of the spirit. You re, you, you go. You produce. So when you come out of it, I had I had more time to produce more things than 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 ever before during this time. Yeah, because we we have so much more time now. You know, like like things that we never could have maybe never done. Um, and real quick, don't don't forget, guys, to check out the whosivers.com, um, see their videos. And you guys are producing. You have a podcast too, right? I have. A, I actually have a nationwide radio show called um, the Ryan Reese Show. Um, it's 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 on. Uh, it's out of L.A. out of K Wave, and then it's syndicated on 111 stations from L.A. to New York City, and then it's on. Then it goes to podcast from there. It's a video. If you go to the whosivers app, you can watch it, or on YouTube or our website. It's or down on the app. It's a live call in. So I interview musicians, artists, pastors. I just did a cool end times update with my dad, two hour show. It's on, it's in podcast format as well. So video, cool. podcasts, radio, it goes to all the platforms. Well, that, that, that's really cool. So yeah, check it out. It'll be in the comments, guys. Feel free to, to click on that. And then don't forget to visit our website too, CalvaryMagazine.org, for putting out new articles every day. Just kind of documenting what God's doing, even through this midst of uncertainty, and and uh, God is still working, and like us on Instagram, Facebook, all that. Um, and so then the next question I have for you, um, I love in the video going back to the doc again. You know, you say you, you're talking about Mark 16, and you're, you're preaching the gospel, and signs and power they follow. You know, and yep. and and just I mean, you have so many examples and testimonies of that. Like you, you're just being obedient to what God's called you to do. You go preach the gospel. And, and signs and power follow, right? Because that's what happens in the Bible. Look, I'm going to read it, okay? Yeah, so, go for it. So, this is out of Jesus' mouth. He said, and he told them to the disciples, he said, go into all the world, all the world, and preach the good news, which that's the gospel, right? New uh, News to every, I'm sorry, let me just start over. Go into good. all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved, but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. These miracle signs will accompany those who believe. They will, and I underlined it, 
cast out demons in my name. They will, and I underline it, speak in language, new languages, in tongues. They will be able to handle snakes with safety, and if they drink anything poisonous, it will not hurt them. We know the story of, of, uh, of Paul in Acts. He gets bit by the poisonous snake. He does not die. And when I read that verse, I think about missionaries or when they're in the Amazon jungle and the tribe's like, you're going to die because you're giving us Jesus. You drink this now. And then they drink it and survive and Jesus gets glorified. You know, that could be a, that could be a situation. Um, and then it says, they will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will recover or they will be healed. And the Lord Jesus finished talking to them and he was taken up into heaven. He sat down in the place of honor at the right hand of God. And the disciples went everywhere and preached. And the Lord worked with them and through them confirming the word of God. And they did many miraculous signs. That's it. That's out of Jesus' mouth. It's that simple. Read it. Do it. Read it. Do it. Don't get caught up in the institution and traditions of church. The reason why the Holy Spirit poured out in a, in a powerful way in the beginning of the Jesus people movement, they weren't caught up in organization and traditions. They God just poured out his spirit and then Calvary Chapel got organized later. What we need is we need a fresh move of the Holy Spirit and we need to not get caught up in traditions. We need to read the Bible and do what the Bible says. That's what Calvary Chapel teaches. The Bible, the Bible. So if that's the case, Read it and do it. That's what I do. I read it and I do it. That's the examples of scriptures. Wow. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's just so true. And, and we can't stray away from the word of God. You know, like, it's, just, it's, it's so true. It's powerful. Um, the, problem, the problem is people aren't doing it. Yeah. People are reading it. And they can quote you scriptures. Read it. They can tell you the Greek. They can tell you the Hebrew. But they're not stepping out in faith. Now, I want, I want to say one thing really quick. Because this is this is. This, this is important. Just to back up what I'm saying. <clears throat> yeah, there's a story of Jesus just fed, fed the 5,000. He told the disciples, hey, go to the other side. I'm going to meet you there. He goes up. He spends time with the Father, the intimacy at 3 o'clock in the morning. He's praying. He says he looks out and he sees that the disciples are in a storm. You know, they're, <laughs> they're scared, right? They're in a storm. So what does Jesus do? What God does, he starts walking on water. He comes across and says that they look, they think it's a ghost. But then Peter, he's like the brave one of the, of the, of the group. He looks out and goes, <clears throat> Jesus, is that you? Jesus says, yeah, Pete, it's me. What's up? What's good? And he's like, if that's you, tell me to come walking on water to you. First of all, who does that? That's insanity. <laughs> like, hey, uh, Jesus, um, tell me to come walking on water. Like, I'm going to come out walking on water. Obviously. Jesus, Peter knows that Jesus can do some pretty radical things, right? Because he's telling him, like, hey, if that's you, let me know if I can come walking out. There's some faith there, right? He believes at some capacity because of the stuff he's read about or not read about that he's seen Jesus do, right? There's some kind of faith there. So, <clears throat> but the other disciples, what are they doing? Nothing. They're scared. They don't say anything. They're just posted up in the boat, right? So, <clears throat> Chilling, scared, no faith. So what Peter does is, so so what does Jesus do? Jesus says, he tells him, he commands him, or tells him, and he says, all right, Peter, come walking on water. So come out. He says, it's, it's a command, right? Come out, walking on water. So what does Jesus do, or Peter does? He steps out by faith and steps out of the boat and tries walking on water. That's insanity. That's crazy. But he steps out, and what happens is he starts walking on water. He starts living the impossible. In the, he's, he starts living the supernatural in the natural realm, walking on water. Peter, he, Peter would have never known that he can live the impossible. He would have never seen the miracle, the signs and the wonders of him walking on water, if he didn't step out of the boat to walk on water, that is no man's land. When you step out of the boat, that's in a that's where you and I put yourself in a situation 
that was where you and I put yourself in a situation where we step out and we just pray. We just gotta we gotta walk by faith that know that God's gonna step out. Like he's gonna he's gonna work. Because if he would have stepped out and didn't have that faith, he would have sunk in the water, which later on he did when he got his eyes on what was happening. He realized he was walking on water. But the problem is I look at that boat. I look at it as like a church. There's a lot of people that are with Jesus, walking with Jesus. They're seeing what he's doing. They're hearing They're hearing the best Bible studies of a lot from Calvary Chapel. But everyone is too scared to step out of the boat by faith. Mm-hmm. When you put yourself in a situation, which is terrifying, and you actually step out in, in, in like no man's land, out of the boat, and you're like, God, if you don't show up, I'm going to fall. I'm going to sink. But what I've seen is when you step out by faith and you put yourself in that situation, God shows up. So when you go to pray for people and you ask God, you talk to God, God, I'm going to step out by faith. He's faithful and he will show up and he in and through your life. But it's just stepping out of the boat. You know, step out of the boat. You got to. You have to step out of the boat. And a lot of people are scared. That is the biggest problem where faith and unbelief chuck smith says faith and unbelief cannot coexist they're mutually exclusive people are too scared to step out of the boat and that's what the whole video is about the great commission video is i'm showing people step out of the boat because it's in the scriptures yeah and it's it's so true but it's hard to do that sometimes but i know it it, it can be scary to know the uncertainty uncertainty you know it's the hardest thing that's the hardest thing in the christian life is when, when once you when you're when you're abiding in the vine and you're you're when you're when you're uh, when you're in that place when you're sold out like you and I, the hardest thing is to step out by faith. Yeah, because we like to be comfortable. When you do though, God shows up and then you go, whoa, He showed up, mind's blown, and you go, I'm gonna do it again. And then next thing you know, boom, you know, the radical revival. It's just a it's just an obstacle that we have to overcome. Yeah, no, I agree. And then um, one last question, and then we'll, we'll start to wrap it up here. Um, you know, I love your heart for, for the youth and, and for people my age, you know, and you're going to schools, you're, you're traveling, and, and, and you're, you're, you're sharing the gospel, and you're seeing these kids come to Christ. And, uh, you know, I, I love your heart for the next generation. And, and, and what would you say to a church or, or the, the churches that maybe aren't um, – pouring into that next generation, you know, or, or aren't, aren't, aren't investing into our youth, you know, uh, like what you, you're, you guys are doing, you know? Well, I'll quote Hitler. Hitler says, <laughs> I love quoting Hitler in churches. He says, uh, you get the youth, you get the future. Now, who was Hitler in tune with? Who was the driving force in Hitler? Satan. Satan is a fisherman too, okay? He throws the shiny objects in front of people to, to, to get us. He's a, he's a fisherman as well, and he's doing a great job of it. If you get the future or you get the youth, you get the future. There is no future in church if you don't have the youth. It's just going to be it's just gonna be older people. They're going to get old. They're going to die, and then the true church is gone. You have to have the youth. It's that simple. Yeah, that's it. It's that simple. Uh, we got to get the youth, and we got to get them activated. The youth will work. The youth want to be activated. They don't want to sit in the in the front and be an usher. They want to be <laughs> activated. What this is the problem? The common problem with churches. A lot of churches. These kids come in all fired up. Dude, I want to be used by God. Okay, be an usher. I don't want to be an usher. I don't either. I want to be activated. Like, can you put me in skateboard ministry? Can you can you put me in video? In, uh, photography. I want to use my gift. Photography. Can I help you with your social media? Can I help you with, uh, you know, maybe uh, helping with the youth? Or, you know, can we go do outreaches? Can we... Can I at least can we go take the youth kids out? Like you got to get them activated. You can't put them in a boring, boring thing. Like, like you know what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta put people in their gifts and their talents. We'll see what their gift and talents are, and then place them in those areas just to like watch and serve and 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 develop. You know, don't put them in in something 
boring that they don't want to do, you know? That they're going to hate, yeah. But, you know, I, I've seen I've seen also, you know, in, in the Calvary movement, which is awesome, is once they get more serious and they put them on staff, they, they always – well, they always mix it like this. Like, they'll put them in the areas of, like, serving with youth, but they also have them cleaning the bathrooms and toilets, you know, just to, like, get them, like, grounded. So it's good to have both, like help help serve after and help them clean, vacuum the place. You have that element of like bringing them, you know, humbling them and getting them down to, to planet Earth to see where their hearts are at. But you also have them serving in those other areas. So there's that balance. You know what I mean? But get them involved with their, with their, you know, what they're, uh, what what they're into. That's a because well, this is also what benefits the church. Dude, if they're killer at, at photography, why do you have them being an usher? Have them use their gift to bring photography. What if they're like an awesome writer? Have them write your social photos. What if they're amazing at engaging in social media? Have them do that as well. Like they they could be a blessing right there in front of you, but you have them not operating in the right place. You know? So yeah, yeah. I'm always looking for young. Hey, you know any young people that want to serve with the whosoever's? Tell them to come to me. I'll I'll I'll, I'll set them up. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Dan. Um, come on to her. It's been um it's been amazing having you, Ryan. Um, it's been a pleasure. And um, just one last question is um, what is what is what has the Lord been showing you amidst all this right now with the virus and everything? What has the Lord been showing you personally? As I I believe you know the Lord's in control and He's going to take care of this. You know? I believe there's a lot of hype. With this thing, I think that that the the virus has been used for a lot of a lot of political gain, and I'm not going to go into politics because that's not my ministry. That's not my ministry, but I'm just saying what we have. With all that said, what we need to do is we need to read the scriptures. What we're seeing is revelations, and what Jesus says in Mark 13. These are the signs of the times. So what I truly believe is that the harvest is ripe, the workers are few. These are the most exciting times to be living in. These are the times to get serious about God. And we know when I, when I said about earlier about the, the political gain, what we see is we see the, the, the chip being introduced. We're seeing control. We're seeing all this stuff. These are the signs of the Antichrist movement being put in place prophecy is being fulfilled globally right we thought the chip would surface in whatever they're talking about introducing the chip not only in israel it's asia it's already done america it's like these are the signs of the times so for us i believe what i'm seeing right now all that to say is that this is the time that the church has to be active they have to get real and they need to get the gospel out of the side of the church. The Great Commission is the most important. We got I agree. people are open to the to the people are looking for spirituality at some they're looking for God and hope and peace. <clears throat> and this is why Jesus has given us the good news. We gotta reach we need to invite them to church and we need to go reach them on their soil, wherever that is. That's it. Wow. Well that that's you know, that's very, wisdom is true, you know, and, and Ryan, thank you so much for doing this with us. It's been a blessing and, and, and we really do appreciate it. And, and we're thankful, you know, for, for talking, I'm thankful it's, it's been a blessing. And, and, um, if you could just close us out in prayer and then we'll, we'll wrap this up, you know? Yeah. 100%. Lord Jesus, we just ask you that you, uh, pour out your spirit on those ones that are watching this Lord. I just ask in Jesus name right now that you just split the heavens and send your Holy spirit and fill them and baptize them right now that they will encounter you in the mighty name of Jesus. Release the torrents of living water. Holy Spirit, flow right, flow through them from their head to their feet, that they will encounter that supernatural peace and joy that you talk about in John 7, 37, Jesus. Rivers of living water that will flow through them, God. And I just ask in Jesus' name, that you, with the Holy Ghost, that you will purge and destroy everything that is unholy in their life right now. You will push it out like a like a tsunami of torrents of water. Re- release that in them and flow through them. And Lord, I just pray that you will baptize them and give them the gifts of the Holy Spirit that you have for them, that you will activate them 
in a powerful way that the gift of faith will increase in Jesus' name. Those ones that are struggling with pornography, I pray that you break that chain of that of the the enemy that he has those strongholds um, in them right now, or those footholds. In Jesus' name, Lord, I even ask in Jesus' name those ones that even have aches and pains in their body from their head to their feet of um, some condition that they have. Jesus, you said, <clears throat> and pray for the sick, cure diseases, and even cast out demons, Lord. So, Lord, we know that you're everywhere, and we don't even have to lay our hands on people because you do you work the way you want to work, however you want. It's your will. So we just ask for your healing hand, that your healing hand, that you will touch people, God, right now, that you will heal them right now, that are listening to you, that all that pain will dissolve right now in Jesus' name, and that you will make their bodies whole from their head to their feet in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you put a call on those youngsters that want to, even older people, just the church at large around the world, that you will put a burning desire, that you will raise up a generation of John the Baptist, Lord, that will go out and preach the gospel with no compromise, and Lord, that you will fill and baptize people right there on the spot as they pray for people, and that you will bring a great awakening, a great revival before you come and reach your church, because you wish that no one will perish. We thank you what you've done in the Calvary Chapel movement, and we know that you are going to continue to move through the Calvary Chapel movement, and not only that, the church at large around the world, a global awakening, a global move of your Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ryan. It's been, it's been an honor. It's been a blessing, man, having you. And, and um, yeah, man, it, thanks for kicking it with me, man. It's been, it's, been, it's been great. Yes. Send me the link. I'm going to be posted on social media platforms, the, uh, the Whosoilers and, and mine. Yeah, well, well I'll get to that here today all right sounds good man thank you man yeah good to see you again yeah good to see you take care thank you bro all right brother bye guys